we're going to write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form. This is 7.6a, algebra 1. If we can figure out the slope and y-intercept of a line, we can write an equation for that line in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So if the slope is 4 and the y-intercept is 2, we just plug those in for the equation. So we'd get y equals 4, because we know the m is the slope, right? So y equals 4x plus 2, because the b is the y-intercept. See? That was easy. How about this one? Now we've got the slope and we've got an ordered pair. All we have to do is substitute the 2 for x, because that's the x value, and the 5 for the y, because that's the y value, and then solve for b. So we've got 5 equals the slope of 3, see, because that was the slope, times 2, that's the x value, and then plus b. Now we're going to solve for b. So we use our additive inverse and we subtract 6 from each side, and that's going to get rid of that 6, isn't it? And 5 take away 6 is a negative 1, so we know our y-intercept b is a negative 1. Now we can write the equation. y equals 3, because that's our slope, x minus 1. And this equation will fit any point on the line. So remember, the slope is the rise over the run. It's the change in the y-coordinates over the x-coordinates as a fraction. That's the difference of the y-coordinates over the difference of the x-coordinates. So it would be y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1, see? And remember, if we can remember this, that's going to help us. The slope is the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates as a ratio, as a fraction. So if we've got 6 over 2, that's our rise over our run, our slope is 3, see? So using this one, we've got... 5 equals 3 times 2 minus 1. See? 5 equals 3 times 2, and we know our y-intercept is a negative 1. See? And it becomes y equals 3x minus 1, and that's the equation of this line. For any values of x and y that we choose as points on this line, it'll make that equation true. So let's take a look at... 1 comma 2. So we used this point, the y-intercept, and we used 2, 5 as our points that were given us, right? See the 2, 5? And the slope is 3. So we were given those, but we can actually choose the ordered pair of 1 comma 2. 1, 2 would be right here. So we could use that point and this equation should be true. So if we use 1 for the x and 2 for the y from that point and plug it into this equation, that means we've got our y value is a 2, our slope is a 3, we multiply it by x, which is 1 minus 1, 2 equals 3 minus 1. Yeah, that's true. Let's look at negative 1, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4 is another point on this line. Negative 1 is here, and negative 4 is here, so that would be the point right here. So we could plug in negative 1 and negative 4 as our ordered pair, and this equation will be true again. So remember, we've got a 3 for a slope and a minus 1 for a y-intercept. So the y value is negative 4, and it equals that 3 slope. Our x value is a negative 1 minus 1. Negative 4 equals a negative 3 minus 1. Yep, that's true. So this equation is true for every single point that we can find in this line. Even if they were fraction points or decimals, it would still come out true. It would be harder for us to find it because we don't know if this is 2 thirds or 3 fourths because it's so, you know, hard to tell when they're not on the actual grid line. So let's look at another one. It says, write an equation for the line that has, ooh, they're giving us two ordered pairs, a 1 and a 3 for x and y, and a negative 2 and a negative 3 for x and y as its points. So remember, we've got x1, y1, and x2, y2, and the slope is the difference of the y-coordinates over the x-coordinates. So first we're going to find the slope. So we put the x1, x2, y1, y2, 
and we subtract and do negative 3 take away 3 and now we have to do x2 take away x1 that's negative 2 take away 1 that gives us a negative 3 negative 6 over negative 3 is 2 for its slope now we just choose one of the ordered pairs it doesn't matter which one this one's positive so I think it's gonna be easier to work with so I chose the 1 and the 3 and we substitute its x and y values in the equation using 2 for the slope. So we're going to substitute this and 2 for the slope and do the same thing we did with this one. See? Because we had the slope and one point. Now we've got the slope and we choose one point. So that means we've got a 1 and a 3. So our y value is a 3. Our slope is a 2. Our x value is a 1 plus b. Now we solve for b. And we take 2 away from each side using additive inverse. That gets rid of that 2, doesn't it? And 3 take away 2 is a 1. We know our y-intercept is a 1. So our equation is 3 equals 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1. That's true. And to become an equation for this line, it becomes y equals 2x plus 1. And any xy point from the line will make this equation true. Isn't that cool? So remember that the B is the point where the line crosses the y-axis, and this is slope-intercept form, and the M is the slope, and we can draw a line from one point and the slope. We can also write an equation from a line with one point and the slope. And also remember the quadrants of the coordinate plane. Remember it makes the shape of a C for coordinate. It starts up here in this corner, as quadrant 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And it goes around in the shape of a C. Okay? I don't want you to think that that's quadrant 1. It starts in the shape of a C for coordinate. Okay? Now, our next video is going to be 7.6b. I'm going to talk about point-slope equation. And if you want to link to the slope-intercept equation of a line, which was our last video, or graph using intercepts, or... Uh, slope from an equation. Just look in this description and there'll be links and there's going to be a link to my grade 8 math playlist for linear equations because there's lots of good information in there about linear equations that you might be able to use. All right? Okay. Keep trying. Keep up the good work. Don't let this scare you. We're climbing a mountain one tiny step at a time and I'll see you next video. Bye.